Today marks 60 years since a seminal moment in American history that has had people searching for answers for decades. President John Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas on this date in 1963. The shock to the country was only equaled by the questions that people had about something like this could happen. In March of this year, political reporter Rick Albin sat down with historian and author Richard Norton Smith to discuss his latest book where he talked about the commission that looked into that assassination and the last surviving member of the group that issued what was supposed to be the final word on the tragedy. The group was the Warren Commission and the final surviving member was President Gerald R. Ford. Here's part of that to the point interview from earlier this year. For more than 60 years, for people of a certain age, this has been a question, a mystery, and for some, a conspiracy. And it has to do with the assassination of President Kennedy and the Warren report, Warren Commission that, that did that. Uh, President Johnson, as President Ford related to me, uh, insisted um, that Ford, because of his credibility, uh, then Congressman Ford was going to be on that commission. In 1999, I had the distinct honor of sitting down with then former President Ford over at the Ford Museum. And I asked him about that. And I want you to listen to this because what he said, I think, is accurate, but it may not be complete as what you have put in your book. Let's take a listen to this from 1999. I am the sole surviving member of the Warren Commission, which investigated the assassination of Kennedy. Uh, we undertook this duty. There were seven of us at the insistence of President Johnson. We came up with what I think are two very important decisions. Number one, that Lee Harvey Oswald committed the assassination. And secondly, the Warren Commission decided that we found no evidence of a conspiracy, foreign or domestic. I have seen no new evidence in the 30-some years that have transpired between Kennedy's assassination and today, no new evidence that would change my mind. I stand by and I uh, am proud the job that the Warren Commission did. And I challenge anybody, including Oliver Stone, to uh, show that our conclusions were inaccurate. I, I let that run a little long because I wanted to line it about Oliver Stone oh, well. because I found that interesting. But on page 220 in your book, you quote him as saying exactly what he said there. We said we found no evidence, but just before that, he said, we didn't say there was no conspiracy. No. We said we found no evidence. And he had a lot of questions. In fact, because he was the last surviving member, for the last 15 years of his life, he was the go-to guy. And whether he liked it or not, he was, in effect, the, uh, the chief defender of the report. Well, the, the, it turns out he was... First of all, you have to know the background. He and John Kennedy were friends. Their offices were they, they, right across exactly. the Exactly. They were neighbors yeah. in the House. Uh, when President Kennedy was in the White House, uh, he turned to Ford more than once for help in getting legislation through. So there was a, there was a bipartisan relationship. There was a personal relationship. Um, but when President Johnson asked him, um, he was of a generation who, who found it impossible to say no to a president whatever the president asked. Okay. The fact of the matter is, however, at the beginning of this, uh, and it went much longer than anyone thought it was going to, the investigation, Gerald Ford was the first, and I believe the last member of the commission, who seriously entertained the possibility of a foreign conspiracy, who believed that Cuba and the Soviet Union might in fact have, have been responsible for the Kennedy assassination. That was Rick with historian Richard Norton Smith. The limousine that President Kennedy was assassinated in is on display at the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation in Dearborn. According to our Detroit affiliate, Ford built presidential limos released to the White House and then returned to Ford Motor Company and then ultimately gifted to the museum.